So what's up mga kache? It's Kuya Dale here. So I'm back with another uh, check out lesson. And today our lesson is going to be choosing in basis. So how do you choose in basis? For example, if you're given a, an amount or a fraction, so will it be mole basis or a mass basis? So we are building up on what we have left last time. Okay. So without further ado, let's start this um, lesson. Okay. So a basis is a refer reference chosen by you for the calculations you plan to make a particular problem. And the proper choice of basis often can make a problem much easier to solve than a poor choice. So it can be um, hours, period of time, such as hours, or a given mass of a material, or some other convenient quantity. It is really important that you always state the basis you have chosen for your calculations by writing it prominently on your calculation sheets or in the computer program used to solve the, the problem. So it is really asked by your teacher that what is your basis in this calculation? So you have to put it in the top of your... Um, you always indicate the basis of your choice. Okay? So always when you start your calculation, always write at the top of the solving paper the basis of your calculation. For example, you will have a basis. For example, you are given a mass percent. So we will write 100 kilograms. Okay? So let's proceed. So we have a criteria for selecting a good basis. So what do I have to start with? So for example, if you have a 100 pounds of oil or if you have a 46 kilograms of fertilizer. So if you are asked for the, um, what answer is called for? So your basis must um, align with the answer that is called for. For example, the amount of product produced per hour. So your uh, your basis is also per hour. So basis one hour. So that that could be a basis, okay? And lastly, what is the most convenient basis to use? For example, I have shared this with you last time that if you have a, uh, a mole percent, you have uh, it is convenient to use. 100 kilogram moles or 100 pound moles or 100 gram moles of material as basis. Okay? And if mass percent would be good if your basis is 100 kilogram of the material. Okay? So, next. So, we have a sample problem here. So, the, the dehydration of the lower molecular weight alkanes can be carried out using ceric oxide or CEO catalyst. So what are the mass fraction and the mole fraction of CE and O in the catalyst? Okay, so so uh, how to start this uh, to solve this problem is that you have to choose a basis. So a good basis of this is be a um, because we are given elements, right? So uh, a good basis would be one kilogram mole or one mole. Maybe uh, it's up to you. One mole of CEO. Okay. So let's make a table. We have the component and then the mole and then the uh, mole fraction. And the molecular weight molecular weight the kilograms of your uh, elements and then your mass fraction mass fraction okay so we have the component we have our cerium and then we have our oxygen then we have the total here, the 
包藏。So, uh, and then we have one mole of each. Okay, so one in one mole of CEO, ceric oxide, we have we have one mole of cerium and we have one mole of oxygen. So total of two moles. And then if we get the mole fraction, it's just one half, just one one over two and one over two. So point five. They're both. Uh, they're equal in the mole fraction and uh, the total is one and then the molecular weight of these elements for cerium we have 140.11 and then for um, oxygen we have 16.0 we add this we have 156.12 and then we get the uh, mass of these elements, so it's just molecular weight. We have we just have to multiply it by the number of moles. So just one times one hundred forty point twelve and one times sixteen. So basically, they're just equal. Okay, so it's one hundred fifty six point twelve also. And then if you get the mass fraction, you just have to divide the individual uh, masses with the total mass. Okay. So it's just 140.12 divided by 156.12. So we have here, you solve this in the, your calculator, it's 0 0.8975. And then for the oxygen, we, the mass fraction of oxygen is 1, uh, 0.012, uh, 0 0.1025, okay? So that's uh, equal to one. So Let's move on to the second problem. So most processes for producing high energy content gas or gasoline from coal inside some type of gasification step is to make hydrogen or synthesis gas. The pressure gasification is preferred because of its greater yield of methane and higher rate of gasification. So we are given a 50 kilogram test run of gas averages at 10% hydrogen, 40% methane, and then 30% carbon monoxide, and then 20% carbon dioxide. So what is the average molecular weight of the gas? So I have taught you how to um, calculate the average molecular weight of the gas. We just have, we'll just have to use a proper basis. Okay, so we are given a gas, right? So what would be a good basis if we solve a average molecular weight of gas and or a mixture of gases so that would be the basis a good basis would be uh, 100 moles of the gas okay so of, of the gas okay so uh, let's uh, solve it directly. So the average molecular weight of the gas is equal to uh, what is the uh, molecular weight of hydrogen? So it's 2.02. .02. Okay. So because we have 100 moles, uh, the percent or the, um, the amount of the gas in the uh, mixture means the same, okay? So we have, because we have 100 moles of gas, so we also have here, um, can have a point 10, right? So 10, point 10 in a, a mole, a mole fraction of our gas, okay? And then, Next, uh, we have the molecular weight of our uh, methane, which is 16.4. And then it's a uh, mole fraction, a mole percent. It's mole, it's 0.40. And then for our carbon monoxide, which, which has a molecular weight of 28, 
and then we just have to multiply it by 0.30 plus it is 30 percent in the overall composition and then finally we have our carbon dioxide which is 44 uh, which is 44 uh, kilograms per kilomole uh, molecular weight okay so just have to multiply it by 0.20 and then we will get the molecular weight of our gas and you know, the average molecular weight of our gas to be 23.82 kilograms per kilogram mole okay so it's that easy it's really easy guys and then for the second to the last uh second to the last sample problem that i'm gonna solve so we'll have to uh, solve this problem. So considering a gas containing uh, oxygen, which is 20%, the nitrogen, which is 70, uh, 78%, and then we have our sulfur dioxide, which is 2%. Find the composition of the gas on a uh, sulfur dioxide-free basis, meaning gas without the SO2 in it. So we'll just have to remove the 2% of our uh, SO2, the 2% SO2 in our gas, okay? Because it is gas, so uh, gas basis, good basis would be 100 moles of the gas. Okay? 100 moles. So, uh, we'll have to uh, create a table for us to solve this problem easily. So component, component, the mole fraction, the mole, then the uh, mole SO2 free. Then lastly, the mole fraction SO2 free. Okay, so our component will be oxygen, nitrogen, and then sulfur dioxide. So we we'll have the total here. And then for our mole fraction, we know that if the oxygen is uh, 0.20. Then the nitrogen is 0.78. And then our sulfur dioxide is 0.02. Okay. To get the moles of these, so just have to multiply it by 100. Okay. So 100. 0.20 times, times 100. So we have 20 moles of the gas and then 7, 78, mole of, 78 moles of the gas and then 2 moles gas so total of 100 moles and then we get the so2 free so we'll just have we'll just uh, neglect the two percent here so we'll just put uh, 0 0.20 and then 78 here and then we will not include the sulfur dioxide anymore and then bring us a total of uh, 98 moles of our gas so if we get now the a more fraction of each species in our gas and our mixture of gas. So just have to divide these uh, amounts of moles by the total, okay? So 20 divided by 98, so it will just be um, around 0.20. And then for 78, 78 divided by 98, so it's around 80. So this is, these are just a rounded uh, off values, okay? So if we uh, get the total of that, so we will get one, okay? So for our last problem, so there are two engineers, so calculating the average molecular weight of a gas mixture containing oxygen and other gases. So one of them uses the correct molecular weight of 32 for oxygen and determines the average molecular weight as 39.2. The other 
uh, uses an incorrect value of 16 and determines the average molecular weight as 32.8. So this is the only error in the calculation. So what is the percentage of oxygen in the mixture expressed as mole percent? So choose a basis to solve the problem, but do not solve the problem. Okay, so we'll just, uh, we'll just ask to get the basis, okay? Okay, so as you can see, uh, we are just, uh, we are, the, the engineers were asked to solve the average molecular weight, okay? So average molecular weight, and we know from our previous, uh, previous problems that if we are solving for average molecular weight, we have a basis of, Correct. Mole basis. Okay. So we we'll just have to use one or 100 moles of the gas. So may it be in the SI or the American Engineering Systems of Units. So it really doesn't matter. So as long as it's as long as it's in moles. Okay. So I have also a practice problem for you. So you'll just have to select a suitable basis for solving each one, but do not solve the problem. Okay. If you can solve the problem, well and good. But for you to practice choosing a basis, just choose a basis and not solve the problem. Okay. So yeah, we have letter A and B here. I will no longer read them. And then for the last uh but this problem, we'll just have to choose a basis also, okay? Do not solve the uh, problem. So this problem asks for the average chlorine concentration in treatment water leaving the plant. So remember, the basis will not only be in amount, it can also be in, uh, in the form of unit of time, okay? So maybe, maybe in a day or maybe in one hour, okay? So that's it for this uh, short lesson. So if you have any questions, you will know where to find me. I have the uh, my contact uh, details down below. So here's my uh, my Facebook name, and then just uh, if you want to uh, practice solving, just answer the practice problems and comment them in the comment section down below. Okay. So the book that I was uh, that I'm using it's still the same. It's Hinaldo and Riggs, the basic uh, principles and calculations in chemical engineering. Okay, so that's it. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you for watching this lesson.